Hello and welcome again to the Simple Bible Study Podcast with your host, the Bible Guy, continuing to go through God's Word one chapter, one verse, one book at a time. And so today we're picking up in this 19th chapter of the book of Genesis. Uh, We're we're starting out at, I believe, the 12th verse. So we're going to pick up there today. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember uh, to like and share and subscribe and all those cool things. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section or shoot us an email. All right, we'll open up with a quick word of prayer as you grab your Bibles and we'll jump right in. So, Lord, we thank you so much for yet another opportunity to go through your word. Father, we just pray that you would open our eyes and our ears, that we may be able to understand what it is that you have for us. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And so Genesis 19 and uh, verse 12. And the men said unto Lot, hast thou any, hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatever thou hast in the city, Bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Verse 14, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get ye out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Interesting. I've actually, I've been a little rough on old Lot as I've <laughs> gone through these, uh, this section here. Uh, and after the last video, one of the dear brothers who listens uh, commented and asked a question about the, the Bible calling Lot righteous. And, uh, it, it, and after I've been so rough on him, how can the Bible, <laughs> how can the Bible God not realize that the Bible calls him righteous? Well, uh, the, the brother was right in the comments. Uh, he was quoting Second uh, Peter chapter 2. And I'll turn there right now. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 6. As Peter comments on this section we're reading today, and it says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, also uh, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Speaking of God now, of course. And and delivered just Lot, and uh, just Lot, just is a uh, uh, adjective there. He was just. Uh, just Lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man, speaking of Lot, dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And so the Bible calls him righteous. And I believe at this point, as we as the point at the point we get to today, we've seen Lot before. We've seen him choose, be a man of the flesh and choose the way of the world and all of that. But at this point, I believe that Lot is a believer in God. Now, I don't think he was before, but I think he followed his uncle Abraham and saw how that man that man loved God. He probably didn't understand it at the time. Maybe thought that's just religious stuff and that's for old people. But then he went on living life and found himself down here in wicked Sodom, where there was nothing but sin and godliness, godlessness, I should say, <coughs> where the people lived wickedly. Uh, and yet were unfulfilled. And I believe it's down here in Sodom, just like uh, Second Peter just told us, uh, that Lot was vexed and started to turn his heart towards God a little, you see. Now, 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 now I believe he's a believer, but he's a weak and carnal believer, kind of like those Christians that Paul wrote to in 1 Corinthians. We'll turn there, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Paul said to them, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? And so that kind of describes Lot, (laughs) a carnal believer, a carnal man, a weak, a babe. Uh, And yet I believe he is a believer at this point. That's our boy Lot. He's slowly coming to the Lord. And, 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 and that, you know, that's, that's, that describes many believers, many people who are, are, are slowly coming and they're babes in Christ and all of that. But the problem with that is what we see here. You see, Lot tries to preach to his sons in law 
Uh, now, actually, they were likely only engaged to, to his daughter since we already learned they were virgins. But he tries to preach and warn them. But because of the, the, the life he lived before them, they don't believe him. They say, Lot, stop kidding around. You, we know you love it down here in Sodom. You, you were just sitting down at the gate yesterday, you see. <laughs> you own a home down here. They, they probably uh, heard about him offering up his daughters when those men were surrounding his house. You see, Lot has no witness. <laughs> and let me say this, uh, uh, no one will listen to you if your life doesn't match your message. Think about this. Think about this. These men in this city, and, and, and these the, these men uh, that that Lot is uh, trying to convince, they end up uh, dying because Lot didn't live right. Think about that. <laughs> uh, they, they they didn't want to listen. They, they wouldn't listen to him because his me- his life didn't match his message. And many people will end up in hell because preacher, you made a mockery of the word. You preached on Sunday, but were a whore on Saturday. (laughs) And people said that that church stuff is a scam. I don't believe in God because of that no good Christian over there. I don't believe in God because of that uh, uh, preacher who's scamming folk out of money. I don't believe in God because that that, that, that so-called believer is not acting righteously. Now, don't get me wrong. (laughs) That's no excuse for them that say they don't believe. And they've got to answer to God for their own sins. But how sad that the preacher, the Christian, is ineffective due to his own life. (laughs) And as I said, not just the preacher in the pulpit, but I'm talking to all of us as believers, as Christians. What message is your life preaching to the world? Are you talking about God yet walking in unforgiveness? (laughs) Can 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 I find you with a Bible under your arm on Sunday and a liquor bottle in your hand on Monday? That's that's a question we must ask. Our life must must match our message. Now we read on. Verse 16 says, And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, this is Lot now, and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Lot is lingering. He's moving slowly here. Uh, he, he's got property down here and he's got friends down here and now he's got to leave and he knows this place is headed for destruction, but he still loves it. You see, Lot loves this place, but over at first John, the second chapter in the 15th verse, John told us, love, not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. John is not talking about people in the world. He's talking about the world, its system, and its amenities, the things of the world. Love not those things. Verse 17, and it came to pass when they had brought uh, them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. And I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil take me and I die. You see, Lot is willing to go, but he he doesn't want to go all the way. He says, I'll go, but I don't want to go all the way out. I'll go to another city like this, but I don't want to go all the way out to the mountains. I don't want to get too far away. And there's plenty of people like that. (laughs) They'll say they want God in their lives, but don't want to give up sin in their lives. Don't want to be humble. Don't want to give up that habit. Don't want to give up that, that sinful thing. Don't want to go too far. I'll go to the next city, Lot says. But I can't go all the way out. (laughs) I can't go all the way out, he says. He says, I won't make it. (laughs) Now we we read on. Behold now, this city is near to flee, and it's a little one. Oh, let me escape there. Is uh, Is it not a little one, and my soul shall live? And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing, also that I will not overthrow the city for for the which thou has spoken. This is why judgment doesn't scare me, friends. (laughs) You know why? He says, I'm not going to destroy this thing. I'm not going to overthrow this city until you come out. 
You see, I preach all the time about end times and uh, uh, what they call eschatology, the study of end times and the judgment of God falling on the world and 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 the horrible things that happen between the chapters of uh, 6 and 19 in the book of Revelation. I preach about it with a smile on my face <laughs> because I understand that this uh, this judgment that God says is not for his own people. Now, there is a judgment seat of Christ, and we'll talk about that. But I'm talking about this judgment all upon this world, God's condemnation of evil and the horrible things that are to come are not to come to his children. Listen to our friend Peter at 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. <laughs> the Lord knows how to do that. And then we're going to turn to Luke, our buddy Luke here, Luke 21 and verse 28. Turn with me, pause the video and turn so make, to make sure I'm reading it right. Okay. I always advise that. Uh, but Luke 21 and 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, what things he's been talking about judgment in this passage. Uh, judgment and horrible things in the world. When these things come to pass, you brother, you sister, who have trusted God, who have put your trust in, in Christ, he says, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And so fear not, believer. <laughs> fear not, you that put your trust in God. Your redemption is going to be going to be coming when you see the problems of the world and all these things getting worse and worse. Look up. That means your savior is on his way. Uh, and so verse uh, verse uh, 22, haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and, and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. I want to read that again. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. I hope people will read that verse very carefully. Folks are running around and saying God won't judge and it's all love. Love is love and sprinkles and hearts and all of that. He rained fire on these cities, friends. <laughs> and somebody will say, well, that's, that's, that's just the Old Testament. God doesn't operate that way anymore. All right. I got New Testament for you. <laughs> Second Peter chapter three, verse 10. Listen to this. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. He's the same God, friends, <laughs> the same God that rained fire down on Sodom and Gomorrah, plans to rain fire again as we just read. He's the same God. Malachi 3 and 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. He's the same God. Culture changes. Laws change. What people accept will change. What people celebrate uh, uh, will change. God doesn't change. <laughs> and that's what I'm here to warn you about. That's what the word of God was, 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 was sent to us to warn you and me about. Because the world has changed and we now celebrate gay marriage and, 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 and all these different ideals. How, how different the world is from just a few years ago. And it, and it can all seem okay. But the God of this Bible does not change. I don't care what your pastor says or, 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 or doesn't say for that matter. The God who judged Sodom will judge this world <laughs> and he'll judge you. And he'll judge me. And so why don't you repent now and give your life to him while you can? He's inviting you. He's got his arms stretched out. It's an offer. It's an invitation. But there's an expiration on the invitation. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. You'll either bow now uh, uh, willingly or you'll bow later 
in absolute judgment. Why don't you give your life to him now? Be born again. <laughs> Let him give you a new life. Somebody says, I gave my life to the Lord. I don't know about that language anymore. What does God want with my life? <laughs> what does God want with my old filthy life? He doesn't want my old. He wants to give me new life. And he wants to give you a new life. Be ye born again. Marvel not, Jesus said. Ye must be born again. You say, well, I was born this way and I can't help it. I can't argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you. Science may argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you. Fine, you were born that way. I'll concede the point. Jesus said, ye must be born again. <laughs> and when you come to him, that's what he'll do. He'll give you new life. He'll make you born again. All right, we'll cut off there and pick up again next time. Until then, God bless you.